že pro zvířecí oběti není místo. Tento transcendentální náboženský systém doporučuje Krišna Pavel Kytě 1866. Všech druhů náboženství a odezdej se mě zbavit všech křišních reakcí nebo se. Jelikož se král Pračina Barišat věnoval vykonávání různých obětí, při kterých se zabíjela zvířata, nárada mu jeho upozornit, že takové jednání spadá do kvality nevědomosti. Hned na začátku s ním má vágovat, on jedna jedna dva je řečeno, proč je tak, to bylo tak. Všechny náboženské systémy spojené s podváděním že nám Bhagavá tam důsledně zavrhuje. Bhagavá dharma na boženství týkající se našeho stavu s nejvyšší osobností božství svířících obětí nedoporučuje. Při vykonávání Sankhita neví Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, není obětování zvířat doporučuje. Om Jati Namusya, Yemna Salakaya, The Vaishnavas are known as Paradukaduki. Vaishnavas so znamy, so Paradukaduki. They were very merciful. And they are concerned with all with the suffering of other living beings. They will never um, cause any suffering to other living beings if they can avoid it. Therefore, how could there be a question of animal killing? That's contradictory to the spirit of mercy. Vaishnavas are, are very selfless. Vaishnavas are very selfless. The Vedic literatures offer many benefits to its practitioners. They offer all kinds of benefits that can be obtained by performing different sacrifices. Such benefits are benefits within this material world to improve the conditions of life. This is known as the Karmakanda section of the Vedas. But the Vaishnavas are not interested in such temporary benefits. What is the point of, of trying to make a nice arrangement in the material world? What is the point of performing great sacrifices to try and get some favorable material circumstances? There is no karma kind of sacrifice that can solve the basic problems of life. Neexistuje karmakánská oběť, která by řešila základní problém života. Janma Vlecce Jaren Vyari odvrz death, old age and disease. Zrození smrt stáří a nemoc. So, these problems may occur anyway. Takže tyhle problémy můžou přijít tak jako tak. Here in this narration about King Puranja, we see how King Puranjan is very concerned about enjoying in the material world. But gradually, King Puranjan becomes affected by old age. And as old age overtakes him, disease becomes a permanent companion. That is the nature of material existence. 
Old age means always something wrong. Stáří znamená, že vždycky je něco nepořád. So this is the nature of material existence. Tak to je povaha hodné existence. In material existence, these basic elements, birth, death, old age and disease, are there for all the beings. Hodné existence jsou ty čtyři základní věci zrození, smrt, stáří a nemoc pro všechny živé bytosti. King Paranjan was not thinking of these things. Král Paranjan na tyhle věci nemyslel. He was concerned with enjoying. And as he had a beautiful queen, he became, and he was a powerful king. He was naturally enjoying his own position. And therefore became very proud. It said, In the cause of being proud, he became insensitive. And he didn't consider anymore the, the fate of other living beings. He was thinking, look at my power. None of these animals can escape me. And in this way, he killed so many animals unnecessarily. So in this way, he became implicated in all kinds of sinful reactions. Sometimes, the Xatria thing, uh, kings uh, went out hunting in the forest in an authorized way. Někdy jezdili šatriští králové lovy do lesa autorizovaným způsobem. It is said that in Vedic culture many classes of men would be residing in the forest. Řečeno ve vědské kultuře mnoho druhů lidí pobývalo v lese. The sages would have their ashrams in the forest. Mudrci tam bývali svoje ashramy. Brahmačkaris would stay with them for training. Brahmačkaris tam byli s nimi a dostali trénink. The father prastas would retire in the, in the forest. Therefore, the forest was certainly um, a place where many people resided who were trying to practice spiritual life. The uh, Satyas would hunt on dangerous animals to try and protect the Brahmanas. Uh, sometimes the sages uh, in the forest would be disturbed by wild, wild animals. So the Kshatriyas were controlling the peace in the forest. Kshatriyas were authorized to to hunt, to practice the art of killing, which they had to do to protect religious principles. But we can see that King Puranjan was taking it too far. He was killing for his own personal pleasure. He was killing to enjoy his own power and strength. So, a major theme in this chapter is the downfall of pride. And how when we become proud of our qualities, how we are destined to become disrespectful. And how we are destined to become implicated in destructive activity. A Vaishnava who becomes proud will 
will make offenses. He will overstep the limits of Vaishnava etiquette. He will therefore um, get reactions for this for these offenses. <coughs> and he will surely lose taste for chanting the name. If he's not becoming involved in a very serious event that, that can destroy his entire spiritual life. But one of the reasons why we are not having a taste for chanting the holy name is because we are still committing offenses. We are still not in that humble state of mind ready to offer all respects to others. So a Vaishnava may receive so many different types of recognition. Um, for example, um, different initiations, um, sometimes titles, Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vaibhava, Bhakti Vedanta. I know you don't need to translate. Uh, these titles are uh, are of a very um, well, but each each one of them the, the prestige is increasing. <laughs> Just like Sarva Boma Bhattacharya. Sarva Boma means the whole earth. Uh, so Bhatta is a is a title of a Brahminical lineage. Bhatta is titu Brahman's dynasty. So that was indicating his caste. And then within that he was an Acharya, and a great learned teacher by example. So he was a Bhattacharya. But not only a Bhattacharya, he was a Sarvabhola Bhattacharya. The entire earth he could conquer. So one could easily see how such titles could influence the mind. How the mind could become a little bit attached. And think, yes, I am the greatest. So, this is the tendency for pratista. The tendency pratista. This pratista is the tendency to enjoy our own name, fame, and glory. Pratista, the tendency we could now see the shame, menos, lavua, pues. It is very difficult to overcome. Pratista is very strong in all of us. Uh -huh. So, obviously, King Puranjan was very much fully prey to this Pratista. Because he was an enjoyer of his own senses. So, for such a person, everything in his life is is meant for enjoyment. Everything is adding to his glory. Everything is an asset. His car, his watch, his computer, everything. His doti, the size of his neck beats, 
everything adds to his prestige. It's amazing. Všechno mu přidává na prestiž, je podvod. So it is very difficult to give up this tendency for false prestige. Je to velice těžké se vzdát té tendenci vyhnout si falešné slávy. We have it also. We have it also. We have it also. What to do? That's a scheme. So we may recognize that such tendencies are there within us. Takže můžeme poznat, že tyhle tendence jsou v nás. And and somehow or other. We need protection. No, we potřebuje nějakou ochranu. It is just something like being in the rain and protection under an umbrella. It's a good issue. The deshti a chrání se pod deshti. Somehow or other, we look at Krishna's lotus feet. Sněm, říjme, proto se znám Krishna. Somehow or other, we bow, we bow down to his lotus feet. We are bowing down to the Supreme Lord. Not only bowing down physically, but we bow down our independence. We bow, we bow down, we bow our will. We just say, we bow down, we bow our will. We just say, we bow down, Taking shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord, we act according to the instructions of the Supreme. And by very carefully trying to do so, we we remain reasonably well protected from this protista. Like an umbrella in the rain. You get a little wet, but not too bad. So in this way, uh, in this way, the protista can stay somewhat under control. But there's no question that it is not there. Only a devotee in the topmost stage of Krishna consciousness is free from such desires. In the Madhurya Kadambini, Shiva Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur describes such kind of desires as Tarangaranji. Which means that we are trying to enjoy the side benefits of devotional service. It's not easy. When we first come, we are automatically getting a humble position. Wash the pots, clean the bathrooms, clean the floors. Yes, Prabhu. I remember that I was invited to clean the office of the temple president and I said with genuine appreciation from, uh, from my heart, thank you very much. That was in my first days of Krishna consciousness. <laughs> um, with time, um, we are getting more and more position. The cushion that we sit on grows in size, it gets bigger. <clears throat> The seat we sit on gets higher. We get a cushion in the back. People spend two hours in making a garment and we wear it two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Třeba trávit dvě hodiny, tím, že můžeme robit dvě hodiny a necháváme na sobě dvě hodiny. Um, when time, our position of prestige is increasing. Přes plyne, tak máme čím dál větší prestiž. With time, uh, we become more and more learned. Přes plyne, tak jsme čím dál většinější. We know scripture. Známe písma. With time, there is therefore more and more opportunity for protista. With time, therefore, uh, this may take over. And although we begin devotional service very sincerely with an attempt to now, after many, many lifetimes, I'm going to surrender to Krishna. Když jsme začali, začali odnou svých ulice upřímně, tak je konečně po tolika životech se budu odezdávat Krišna. Fáhlen džáme nám tak já nám mám propádit. Then, uh, after some time, we may start to enjoy the side benefits. Potom po nějakém čase si můžeme začít užívat těch postraných přínosů. It may become, it may come in prestige, it may come in material opulence, And these things may distract us from the real purpose of spiritual life. It is said, Aishwarya Shishamagas Shirvirya Siya Sasasviya Gyanas Vaira Gyus Chaiva Sanam Bhagam Iting Yuna. That Krishna has all the six opulences in full. Řečeno, že Krishna má v plné míře všech šest slyšených atributů. He has all wealth, all beauty, all knowledge, all fame, all strength, all renunciation. Všechnou krásu, poznání, bohatství, slavu, sílu a odříkání. And so, and therefore, since he has all those things in full, nebo že to všechno má v plné míře, those things cannot attract him. Tak tyhle věci už ani nemůžou přitávat. So Krishna is not attracted by wealth, by power, beauty, fame, knowledge, not even by renunciation. Therefore, by even by being very renounced, one cannot treat Krishna. Even by Fasting every ekadasi, one cannot attract Krishna. Krishna One must, um, one must actually um, render service to Krishna. So it's interesting to note that our aim should be to attract Krishna. To je zajímavé si všimnout, že to je náš cíl je složit Krišna, je to bylo upoutat Krišnu. Mostly we are not so thinking so much about that our aim should be to attract Krišnu with our service. Většinou na to moc nemyslíme, že to je naším cílem spolu službou upoutat Krišnu. We are more thinking about what attracts us. Myslíme na to, co přitavuje nás. And we're trying not to think of these things. We're more concerned that Maya is so strongly attracting us. And we're trying not to think of Maya. Please take it away. One devotee brought up to Srila Prabhupada that sometimes our memories used to come about previous sinful activities. Even while chanting. So he said, what am I doing wrong? It's like I'm really trying to chant and I really don't want to do those sinful activities anymore. Then why is the memory coming back? Prabhupada said, the memory is coming back to remind you that you should never do these things again. 
Já vám říkám, ty skromníky se vrací a teď ti připomněl, že tyhle věci by si už nikdy neměl dělat. In this way, Prabhupada was so expert. There was one GBC um, in Mexico. GBC in Mexico. And he had a big problem with his local temple president. They couldn't get on. President And somehow this temple president was a very difficult person according to the GBC. Uh, just too much. So he wrote a whole letter with the complaints about him to Shiva But at the bottom of the letter he wrote, but I must give the devil his due. He is really good at promoting book distribution. <laughs> Musím jako přiznat Diablovi taky jeho předností, protože on je skutečně dobrý v propagování a rozdávání knížek. So Shiva Prabhupada wrote him back and said, thank you very much, I have received your letter dated at such and such and noted the contents. Shiva Prabhupada mu odpověděl, děkuji mnohokrát, dostal jsem tvůj dopis a pozorně jsem si prošel jeho obsah. He said, this is my štáma. A to je vaš štáma. He even sees good qualities in the devil. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then Prabhupada said, but I want you to tolerate him just as I am tolerating you. <laughs> um, Prabhupada was just so expert in exposing someone's faults and, in, and whenever someone's getting a little proud into reducing that pride very expertly. Um, so uh, undoubtedly um, pride manifests in in everyone. Uh, Prabhupada also uh, quoted a, an English proverb that the pauper is proud of his penny. Uh, just like in Vrindavan there was one young rickshawala and he was very proud. Because he could drive his rickshaw on two wheels. <laughs> so he thought he... Sorry. He thought he was very special. He could drive on two wheels. Still a rickshaw. <laughs> Not a very prestigious position. So this is our condition also. Basically, no one is very qualified in this age. In previous yugas, we would not have even received human birth. Our present karma would have not been sufficient for a human birth. But in this age of Kali, there is a special concession. Especially if the human birth is given very easily. Even to those who hardly have human qualities. Therefore, three-parted person, the two-legged animal. So, therefore, we should not think that um, we are deserving. Um, um, somehow or other, we are allowed to call ourselves Vaishnavas. 
se nějak je dovoleno, abychom se nazývali vajšnavy. Somehow or other, we are allowed to, to do service in the temple. Nějak je nám dovoleno, abychom dělali nějakou službu v chrám. Somehow or other, we are allowed to, to go on the altar and to do some deity worship. Se nám je dovoleno, abychom chodili na oltář a uctívali Božstva. And somehow or other, some of us are, before, are performing yagyas. Někteří z nás se nevystaví k tomu, že dělají yagy. And somehow or other, some of us are chanting mantras. Někteří z nás se nevystaví k tomu, že chanting mantry. But actually we have no qualification for these things. Ve skutečnosti pro tyhle věci nejsme kvalifikovaní. In the first canto, Uh, of Srimad Bhagavatam in a book where Srila Prabhupada describes those men who in this age of Kali dress up like sannyasis. That is to say, what level of renunciation is there in comparison to the sannyasis of the Vedic age? Potřeba vidět, jaké je tady odříkání ve srovnání s sanyasím do vědských dobů. We are here somehow or other because of Lord Chaitanya's mercy. My jsme nějakým způsobem tady díky milosti Pána Chaitanya. And all these different types of recognition we are getting in devotion so simply a little more of Lord Chaitanya's mercy. A všechny tyhle Tvojí uznání, které dostáváme v organizmu svůjte, je jenom víc milostí a lepšíte. Just an extra blessing. Nějaké poženání navíc. But we see, for example, in, uh, in some of the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaburu, some uh, special behavior. Například u některých společníků Sri Chaitanya Mahaburu vidíme uh, Sanatana Goswami and in Haridas Thakur. And one sees in them an extraordinary humility. When all the devotees came from Bengal to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was staying in the house of Kashishwara uh, near the temple in Jagannathpuri. So all the devotees went in to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in, in great ecstasy. And then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, where is Haridas? And the devotees said, Haridas, where is Haridas? He was here just a minute. Where did he go? So they looked for Haridas. And then they found that He had never entered the house. He was just lying flat in the road, paying obeisances, and he was not getting up. So when Lord Chaitanya heard about that, he personally came up the house and he picked up Haridas. And he invited Haridas to come in. And Haridas said, no, 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 I cannot go in, the, in that house. He said it is too close to the temple. And I am a Yavna. I am very fallen. I come from a family of meat eaters. So I cannot go near the temple. So I does. Is uh, took his birth in a Muslim family. Although we hear that he actually never ate meat, but only drank milk and left at a very early age. But still, he always remembered. No, I am from a very fallen, fallen birth. I cannot go near the temple. So Nathan Goswami came from a Brahmin birth. 
but had become involved in the Muslim government. And therefore also considered himself from and he would not even walk over the main road to the Jagannath Temple. Because the Pujaris were walking there and he was afraid that he might touch the body of some Pujari. He said, if I touch one of the Pujaris, that would be a big offense to Lord Jagannath. So instead he walked over the beach, although the sand was very, very hot. And it burned his feet to blisters. But he didn't care. So, at one point, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could no longer tolerate the humility of Sanatana Goswami. He said that this, this humility was too much. And he requested Sanatana Goswami to please stop now. Stop. This is too much. And through this humility, the Lord became purchased. So one can only purchase or attract Krishna through humility. So this should be our meditation. To somehow attract Lord Krishna through our devotional service. Knowing that only humility is that which can purchase the Lord. So, therefore, again and again, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stressed the importance of humility. Uh, and somehow or other, uh, It will be a struggle for us. It's not that one can ever think, now I've achieved it. Rather, every day again, a Vaishnava will struggle to take a humble position. By very carefully taking the whole position, we can possibly remain protected from pride. <coughs> so like, like an umbrella in the rain, we are taking shelter of the whole position. And then maybe we will not get too wet by the tendency for pride. Mm-hmm. Then maybe we can avoid committing offenses. Then maybe we will not lose taste for chanting the holy name. And then maybe if we have some taste for chanting, yes, maybe then, maybe then we can qualify to attract the mercy of Krishna. Maybe then we can go back to the spiritual world at the end of this life. So therefore, um, to try and be humble is a constant endeavor for a Vaishnava. And we see this tendency manifested in the strongest way in the most advanced Vaishnavas. 
They're trying more than others to take the most humble position. Yet sometimes for preaching, one may accept an elevated position. Just like there is, um, there are some photos of Srila Prabhupada sitting on a huge silver throne. Existují fotografie, jak se Prabhupada sedí na obrovském stříbeném trůnu. And in these photos, you can look at Srila Prabhupada's expression on it on his face. Můžete se dívat na výraz Prabhupada obličeje na těch fotografiích. His hands are folded, his face is looking downward in an expression of humility. His face seems to be saying, I know this is a monster of a throne. <laughs> It's really too much for anyone to sit on such a seat. But what can I do? I'm sitting here as the representative of Krishna. Carefully representing his words, his teachings. Sitting on this royal throne simply so that everyone can see where the absolute truth is. In this way, even one can even in, in humility accept so much worship. But one is never thinking, I am qualified for this. I'm, I'm accepting this because this is naturally due to me. But rather, I'm simply taking this position as Krishna's messenger. All glories to him. And Sri Prabhupada every time pointed at Krishna, let's worship Krishna. It's, it's, that is the essence. This is the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Just like we have the Sri Prabhupada Lila Rita. But that was not Prabhupada's idea. Prabhupada did not one day call such a group and said, I want you to write my biography. No, only when the devotees were suggesting it. Several times. Then Prabhupada agreed. For the sake of creating faith, for the sake of creating support for the devotees. But always he remained humble throughout. So we also must uh, take responsibility in this movement. Take positions of leadership. Sometimes even tell other devotees what to do. And yet remain in a very humble state of mind. Um, and therefore, we must always remain respectful. It is said one can recognize a great man by seeing how he deals with a very insignificant man. Um, 
Huh? One can deal very nice with the superiors. Yeah. But with um, someone in a more insignificant position. <laughs> like this. So it is not easy to truly have a, an attitude for humanity. But humility goes hand in hand with offering respect to others. It's not necessary to a hundred times proclaim that I am just so fallen, I'm so fallen, I'm so fallen, I'm so fallen. Musíme jenom pořád stokrát prohlašovat, já jsem tak poklesl, já jsem tak poklesl, já jsem tak poklesl. Like the devotee who said he was the most fallen. Jako ten oddaný, který říkal, že je nejpokleslejší. And Prabhupada said, you're not the most of anything. A Prabhupada říkal, ty nejsi nejnic. No, that is not what I said. I said, you're not the most of anything. That is not nejnic. I understand that must check. A mad elephant can destroy a whole garden, not only with his trunk, with his feet, with everything. <laughs> so, 
after a man elephant has been through your garden, there's not much left of it, that's for sure. Still, Bhagavad Gita gives us the first Neha Bhikkhama Nasasi Pratyava and Vidyate Svambhuna Vyasidana Sitaite Mataviya. That devotion, the benefit of devotional service is never lost. Bhagavad Gita Prasta Rika, že prospěch získaný od Ramos Dukou se vidí nestrácí. So, what does it mean in that verse? That there are small letters at the bottom in the contract which says, except if you commit the met elephant offense. To znamená, je to ještě jako malý písmo, by tam mělo být přepsané, kromě toho, když se dopustíte přes tu kuši daného slova? No. Ultimately, the reactions that one gets, even from the met elephant offense, are not eternal. Ve většinou smyslu dokonce reakce ani za tenhle přes tu kuši daného slova nejsou věčné. Daksha cut the head of a goat for a family or two ago. Jako Daksha dostal kozí hlavu, že urážil pánaši. And he only had to have that for one cow talk. <laughs> Not very bad. And after that, he uh, gradually got back to a more normal form. So ultimately, uh, one gets another chance. But uh, that may be a very, very long time. Uh, to start. Uh, again, so this is not recommended. <coughs> this is not, not very intelligent. <coughs> so that my elephant offense is something uh, very dangerous. <coughs> it happens when I become proud and passionate. No, to dochází, když jsme píšní a vášní. Attached to the result means passion. Přikoutaný k výsledku znamená vášní. That we have a particular idea how we want it. Přes konkrétní představu, co chcete. Then we become proud. Pak se píšníme. And then uh, I get careless with you and the vášní. No, potom jsme prostě představili s nimi. So definitely. So many times the world is worried about how will I conquer my material desires? How will I conquer my material desires? But don't worry. Just the, the real issue is how do I conquer this offensive mentality? Because if we conquer the ten offenses against the Holy Name, Krishna will take away our material desires. We don't have to worry about that. Therefore, so much stress is placed on avoiding the ten offenses. It's the key to success. One of the ten offenses is to maintain material attachments. So how, how we get rid of these material attachments? Yeah, the word maintain material attachments um, is not the same as having material attachments. attachments. <coughs> I'm going to explain. Maintaining material attachment. Maintaining material attachments. It is like feeding them every day very nicely. Until they become big, fat and strong. Uh, whereas if you have material desires, that's all right. Just firmly engage in the process of bhakti yoga. And just 
Ignore this material design. Uh, you know, that we ignore it. No, no problem. Uh, no problem. But if you feed them, if you yes, you give them something, uh, then they become very strong. Pokud je přiživujete a občas jim něco přihodíte, tak potom velice zesílíte. Then you become addicted. Tak prostě na něj vidíte návyk. I want to play tennis or I want to play... Uh, yeah, I don't know what I want to play. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say. <laughs> <laughs>